Take a deep breath because honestly, it's pretty terrifying. This is a real photo of astronaut Bruce floating 100 meters away from the space shuttle with no rope connecting him back to the ship. In 1984, he was on a mission to test the space jetpack system. So he left the ship and simply flew away into the darkness of space. Now, when he was asked about his mission, he said that the only thing that really terrified him was how cold he got soon as he was away from the shuttle. I mean, just imagine just you alone in the space and there is no way to come back home if the jetpack system stopped working. And uh, what if he just drifted away? Uh, he was the first to test out the jetpack system, but uh, do you know who was the first to go to space? Let me tell you the incredible sad story of Laika, the space dog. Back in 1957, the Soviet Union was willing to do whatever it would take to win the space race. No one knew if the human body could withstand the lack of gravity. So they turned on to dogs for testing. Laika was a stray dog from the streets of Moscow and she was probably happy thinking she finally found a home. Against her will, the scientists implanted sensors to measure her breathing and pulse, then strapped her into the rocket, knowing they were sending her to the grave. The cabin was just the size of a washing machine, and as it was launched into space, like I was scared, her heart rate tripled, the temperature inside rose to 40 degrees Celsius. And uh, after just six hours, Laika's heart stopped. Another sad story, but this story was also awesome. NASA's Mars rover Opportunity was one of the most successful rover we have launched into space. And her last words are some of the saddest words you'll ever hear. You see, Opportunity was initially only supposed to survive on the red planet for 90 days. But she was resilient. Using her solar panels, she was able to travel over 28 miles across the Martian surface over 14 years. Then, one fateful day, as a Martian storm descended on the rover and skies was choked of all sunlight, the solar powered opportunity messaged home saying, My battery is low and it's getting dark. And I got emotional when I heard this message. Imagine a million miles away from home, someone saying this. Now, of course, we all know that sunsets here on the Earth have beautiful red, pink hues. But what about on other planets like Mars, for example? Well, luckily we have rovers there that can take some pictures and send them home. And this uh, is what we see. You see, sunsets on Mars have this beautiful thing to them. This happens because the fine dust on Mars' surface allows the blue light to penetrate the atmosphere slightly more efficiently than the other colors. Also, you might notice that the sun looks quite small in these pictures. And that's of course because Mars is just further away from the sun when compared to the Earth. Back in 1990, the Voyager 1 spacecraft was leaving the solar system out past Neptune. Carl Sagan eventually managed to convince NASA to turn her around and take just one last image of Earth. Some people said this was just a dumb and a waste of fuel, but they did it anyway. Voyager 1 was 4 billion miles away from home when it snapped this picture. That's the Earth in the scattered ray of light in his book. When writing about this image, Sagan wrote, the Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. Look again at the dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. But did you know that days on Earth are literally getting longer. Each year, the sun moves 1.5 inches away from us, which is a lot off, if you ask me. As a result, the Earth rotates slightly slower every single year, making our days longer. 
1.4 billion years ago, a day on Earth was just 18 hours long. And in just 1 billion years, a day on Earth will be 28 hours long, meaning you can get a full night's sleep and still have 24 hours for activities. You know, when people say you are a star, they are not actually lying. Every breath of air you take was formed in the heart of a dying star billions of years ago. Every gloss of water you think you can be traced straight back to the Big Bang. The atoms in your body are deeply connected to the cosmos, astronomy, and physics are simply how they get to observe itself. You are truly made of a star dust. Back in 1977, NASA launched the twin Voyager space props, Voyager 1 and 2, into the space. They were originally launched to take advantage of a rare alignment of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. That would not happen again for another 175 years. Now, on their way out of our solar system, they visited all of the outer planets, taking all these beautiful images of them and investigating their moons for the first time ever. But you see, these are actually special spacecrafts. They are further away from us than anything ever produced by human. And NASA thought about what happened if an alien civilization found one of these spacecrafts. So, they included a very special message on board, the Golden Record, also known as Earth's Time Capsule. One day when humanity has been extinguished like the flame of a candle, this record might be the last evidence of our existence anywhere in the universe. It tells the story of a world through sound, images, and science. Earth's greatest music, though time, the sound of nature, spoken greetings in the dozens of languages, and more than 100 images expertly chosen by Carl Sagan and his team to tell our story. The human story. The Earth story. When black holes collided with another one, they sent literal ripples throughout the fabric of space-time at the speed of light. These ripples squeeze and stretch everything in their path, similar to the ripples on the lake. Now, Einstein predicted that these ripples must exist if theory of general relativity were to be correct. But it was not actually until 2015 that we actually finally detected one for the first time. Scientists use an instrument called Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave observatory or LIGO. A laser beam is split down to 4 km long arms with mirrors at the end that reflects the laser back and forth. Now as the gravitational will pass through the earth, the length of each arm is changed ever so slightly, which they were able to detect using this matter. One day, potentially sometime soon, one of the biggest star in our night sky will explode and when it does, your night sky will look like this. Well, of course, I'm talking about the red giant star Betelgeuse. It's just a silly little star who often acts weird, getting brighter and dimmer, shooting off huge amount of its surface in the process. And now new research came out just a few months ago showing that this star is in the end of stages of its life, fusion carbon in its core. If it's true, then Betelgeuse will go boom in your lifetime. It will be bright enough that you can even see it during the day. It will cast a shadow at night and before your thing. Let me tell you, it is actually 500 light years away. So technically, it could have already exploded. In just over 1 million years, something terrified and kind of beautiful will happen. Something that only happened in science fiction movies. A star will likely to pass through our solar system. This is Gliese 710. It's an orange star slightly smaller than our sun and is currently located around 60 light years away from us. But not for long. In 1.29 million years, the star will just pass 
1.16 light years away from our sun comparing that to the current closest star to us which is 4.2 light years away this is nearly scarily close in fact it will be so close that it will appear as a bright in our sky as Venus and Jupiter. This is so close that it has an 86% chance of actually passing through the Oort cloud. The Oort cloud is just this huge pair of icy rock that surrounded our solar system and at this distance it could seriously impact some of the objects in the Kepler belt like Pluto could be impacted. Astronomers have predicted that this could result in something known as comet train sending showers of comets into the inner solar system for millions of years. Now we are going really far into the future. In 225 million years from now, we will finally have completed one full orbit of our Milky Way galaxy. This is known as a galactic year. Despite the fact that we are orbiting pretty quickly at 230 kilometers per second, it still takes us 225 million Earth years to complete one full orbit. Since our planet formed, Earth has completed this trip 20 times already, but never with the humans on board. But we don't orbit in a nice flat plane like this. We are actually traveling more like this, tilted on a 60 degree angle. Every single year, moon moves 1.5 inches away from the Earth. This is because of tidal interaction with the Earth. The moon's gravitational pull create these bulges on, on either side of the Earth. But because Earth rotates in the same direction as the moon orbits, the plunge causes the moon to speed up ever so slightly causing it to slowly get further and further away. While almost 2 inches doesn't sound a lot, but over a million years, it adds up. In 650 million years, this will have two huge effects. A day on Earth will last 24 hours, 18 minutes due to Earth's rotation slowly slowing down as a result of Moon moving further. And more importantly, the last ever total solar eclipse will happen. Because of this point, the moon will no longer be big enough in the sky to eclipse the sun completely. Currently, the moon is 400 times closer to the earth than the sun. And it just so happened to be 400 times smaller. This means that we get to see this beautiful total solar eclipse as the moon is just the right size to block out the light from the sun perfectly. But eventually, the moon will be just too small because it moved away from us and we will no longer be able to see eclipse like this. Sahara, a place you probably picture something like this, dry, hot, barren, hell on earth. But did you know one day it will look like this, a vast grassland filled with life. It happened many times before and it will happen again soon. For hundreds of thousands of years, this area on the African continent has alternated between desert and tropical savanna on a roughly 20,000 year cycle. This is caused by the precession of Earth axis every 26,000 years as it moved and wobbled its way around the sun. It reached its present day desert conditions around 1,100 years ago after slowly drying out across around 6,000 years. In around 30,000 years, Earth will wobble once again, flip, leading to the Sahara Desert becoming green once more. In one and a half billion years, something truly freaky will happen. The tectonic plates that are responsible for creating the vast mountain ranges around the world, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and the creation of new land, those tectonic plates will stop moving. It's actually true. Eventually, the mantle of the Earth will have cooled so much, preventing the tectonic plates from drifting anymore and the effect will be horrifying. The carbon cycle completely stops affecting life on Earth. The continents no longer move, preventing new continents 
from forming, the wind and weather slowly rot in the mountains here on Earth over millions of years, leaving their remaining land extremely flat. This could even result in the Earth being reverted to an ocean world over time, the entire planet covered in a cold ocean. A side effect of climate change that we don't often hear about is the edification of our ocean. The ocean absorbed 30% of the carbon dioxide released into our atmosphere. This CO2 is absorbed by the sea water, leading to an increased concentration of hydrogen ions, making the sea water more acidic. This actually causes corals to be unable to maintain their skeleton, impacting their growth and strength. This is one of the leading causes of slowly dying reefs that we have today. Around the world, particularly in Australia, Great Barrier Reef. And what is awful is actually takes more than 2 million years of these corals and other marine organisms to recover from the ocean edification caused by humans. 200 of years are action resulting in 2 million years of destruction for the reefs. For thousands of years, our ancestors will look to the star with wonder, telling stories of what they see. Orion the Hunter, the Big Deeper, the Southern Cross. These constellations have guided humans for thousands of years, even helping them navigate across the vast ocean late at night. But uh, in 5 million years, none of these constellations we see today will have survived. When you are outside at the night watching the stars, it's easy to think that these stars are just fixed in one place, never changing. But of course, this is not true. They are actually moving through space at hundreds of kilometers per second, just like our sun. Since 2014, the European Space Agency Gaia mission has been tracking the position of the stars in the Milky Way with greater accuracy than ever before and using this data they created this real video showing how stars in our sky will move over the 5 million years. Constellation will wander leaving our stories in the past the Big Deeper and Orion the Hunter left as distant memories. This asteroid named Binu is currently ranked as the highest potential risk for a serious collision with Earth and it's headed for us right now. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory actually tracks the entire asteroid catalog. We had to access whether there are any risk of collisions. The program currently ranked Binu right at the top with a 1 in 750 chances of it hitting Earth on September 24th. 2182, astronomers even found that there is actually a 30 years window where our orbits are so intertwined that there are 8 separate occasions where a collision could occur. At its closest approach, Ben will be just 750,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. This is roughly twice as far as the Moon. Now, if this impact does occur, the collision will have the kinetic energy of 1200 megatons of TNT. Now for the comparison, the TSAR bomb, the biggest nuclear weapon ever detonated on Earth, was around 52 megatons, meaning Bennu would strike the Earth with the power of 22 TSAR bombs. In preparation, scientists have actually been studying Bennu in details for decades now. The Osiris Rex mission was sent to Bennu asteroid and bring some rock back to Earth. It launched on the Space 8, 2016, successfully collected a sample as you can see here and then touched down back on Earth just last year. The contents of the example are currently being studied, so we don't know too much. 